first playoff appearance and the team has been getting ready for it. So how have you been preparing knowing uh, you've got a postseason date? Oh, we're not looking too far ahead. Like tonight is is uh, going to be a great game, and so we want to focus on this game, and then the next game is Sunday against Phoenix. Um, but we understand that once we do enter the playoffs, the level of play is gonna uh, is gonna rise, and that the competition is gonna be uh, so much better uh, than it was in the regular season because everybody's uh, shooting for that goal to win that championship. Now you had a big response with New York on Sunday after losing here. What was that like uh, in terms of catharsis? I know Taj had a pre-game pep talk, and how does that set up momentum for the team? That's enough right there. When Taj has, a pre when Taj has to have a pre-game um, speech or talk with us, it, it says a lot uh, that we aren't doing what we need to do, and if Mama Taj has to say something to us, then we need to get it in line. And um, as far as that series between New York, it was like the perfect opportunity to look at a playoff situation where you're down 0-1, and you had to get on the road and go and try to pull out a win, and we did. Then talk about the bench. Amber Harris stepped up big, set a career high, 12 points, and really was feeling the baseline jumper. Um, you know, she's trying to find her own, and, and uh, that baseline jumper is her gig. Uh, it started since the Washington game when she had the crossover move to the basket. Um, I'm just happy that she's starting to feel comfortable within the system and playing well. Now, have you filed for copyright infringement yet for that crossover? <laughs> Uh, I know I should, I should, but no, nah, I'm, I'm going to let her slide with that. Uh, it looked great. It, it, it was, uh, you know, she made the bucket at the end. Most people make great moves and don't finish the play, so she finished the play. I won't, you know, give her any copyright infringement for that. As long as it helps me with the team win, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Never, never upset about winning. So you mentioned Taj's speech. How has that uh, helped shape the leadership of this team as they get ready to make their first playoff appearance since 2004 when none of the current players were on the roster? Um, you know, anytime, anytime Tar says anything, we, we all, you know, close our mouth and open our ears to what she has to say because she's been around this league. She's experienced, you know, success and uh, has, has won a championship. And as Waylon has been in, you know, the finals of the WNBA as well as Bronson has, you know, won a championship. So anytime any one of those three have anything to say, we're listening because we know they've been there, they've done that, and we're trying to get, you know, that championship and that playoff experience. And then... Obviously a title is in the works, but what are you looking for to show to the national audience as they will get to see you for the first time in the playoffs? Get to see me? Um, you know, I just want Playing to play. anyway. Yeah, I know, playing, right. Um, you know, just to show them I'm back, you know, like my competitive nature. I'm back on the court. I'm playing well. Uh, my team is playing well. That's, that's the difference in past years. I've had individual success, but my team hasn't been there with me. So, um, you know, it, it's just good to know that our team is going to be successful and that we can all enjoy it together. And speaking of team, uh, one of your teammates, Player of the Month for August, and uh, I know you two have jokingly said that the other person should be MVP, so... In your mind, what makes Waylon an MVP candidate and how has she uh, improved this season because she's on fire? Um, Waylon is the MVP candidate because she's the reason why we have the record that we have, the reason that we are number one in the West, and the reason why we are uh, that we have home court advantage throughout the playoffs. She's the floor general. She gets us in places where we're comfortable, where I'm effective. Uh, she knows how to push tempo of the game. She knows how to control the tempo of the game. And, that's what's been uh, most effective and efficient for us, that Waylon's been the, 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 the leader and the captain. Now, two games left, uh, but if you want to look back yet, any moments in this season that you think define the links for the 2011 campaign that you want to share? Um, not one specific moment. I think every moment that we've shared together has been a defining moment because we're doing things that's never been done in Lynx history and um, we just cherish each day that we're t out here together and, and we take nothing for granted. We, we enjoy our experiences. And then another experience you had was in WCCO earlier this week. They were talking about why the team isn't getting more love and obviously you're focused on encore performance, but what do you think this playoff appearance will do to generate more buzz for Minnesota's WNBA franchise. Um, I think it will definitely continue to open up the minds of um, you know our fans here in Minnesota. I know you know the Vikings have you know their fans base locked down, the Twins have their fan base locked down. Um, but we would like to gain some of those fans from those different um, uh, areas, and uh, hopefully you know this playoff success that we're having, this run that we're having, will open up the doors to gain new fans. Are you going to sneak in Saints updates tonight because uh, they're playing against the Packers? The Saints are going to win. That's all you need to know. That's that's it. That's all you need to know. They're going to humiliate them like they did last year with 51 points or whatever it was. So just, just, just. Saints fan to the core even after Green Bay took the title last year. 
I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't like cheese heads. You know, I'm, I'm part Minnesota now. I've been up here six years, so I don't like the cheese head just like them, just as much as you don't like them. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm okay. It's like I'm neutral with this stuff. I'm a fan of the game, football. I like the Saints. I love the Saints, and I hate the cheese heads. <laughs> Well, hey, before you go, you got you got to take this no, because. No, 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 no. That's well, yours. you, but you he play with this, buy, don't no, you? No, he won't buy a low sling shirt that Charde Houston designed and and has it out for the fans. He's too cheap to buy a twenty dollar low sling shirt. So, I have a free headband for him that he needs to wear for every interview that he does with a Lynx player until he get a shirt. Until we get a shirt. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a fun postseason. It's going to be an excellent postseason as long as I see you with the headband. <laughs> well, I'll work on the shirt. You work on getting the headbands out because if I'm going to wear it, you got to get the other. So Steven over there doesn't have a shirt either. Oh, <laughs> but it was between me and you. I know, but he doesn't have a shirt either. I heard you two. <laughs> I heard you two, you know, uh, I heard you. his pass is over. Well, yeah, he is over right now. Right now, right now. <laughs> only because he named his dog. Yeah, only because he named his dog after me, but he'll be back on the hit list in a minute. <laughs> Well, Simone, thank you, and this is going to be a fun postseason. Hopefully, we'll get to see you a few times, but have fun no matter what. This is going to be an experience you'll never forget. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited. Simone Augustus of the Minnesota Lynx, and uh, I guess it is on.